Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. Welcome back to the start of a work week out here. Seven or uh, yeah, July fifteenth, two thousand twenty-four is the day. Eleven thirty-four a.m. California time here, along the West Coast. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a three point seven into the region of the Philippines. There, uh, we did see some uh, interesting activity here early this morning around the Illinois area with a uh, 3.4 coming in just outside of the Aurora region. Chicago sits here to the northeast shaking things up early in the morning. That would be uh, roughly about all oh, three in the morning or so uh, for these folks. Uh, I heard quite a few folks waking up. 3.4 earthquake in this area. Uh, the felt map did show a broad area around Chicago, highly populated area over here being woken up and for the folks that were awake, uh, feeling this earthquake. Nothing major in terms of uh, large scale activity, uh, but nonetheless a little rare earthquake out there in Illinois. Now, quite a few of the did you fill up responses there coming in. Um, the question is, is this super rare? Do we? ever see earthquakes out here yes we do in fact i went ahead and pulled up the historical model here from the usgs catalog which is a pretty cool little feature in order to track historical earthquakes now as you can see here uh, there's today's event 3.4 looks like last year in the end of uh, november or middle of november there we see that 3.6 a little bit larger than today's quake roughly in the same area and then a 3.8, a little bit further down south towards New Madrid Seismic Zone. But this area here can see some earthquakes. Uh, it doesn't happen every single year. It seems like every other year or so we get a 2 or a 3. Uh, in fact, they can see a 4-pointer in this area, 4.2 back in 2024. Uh, so there is some fault systems that do sit up here. As far as any pumping operations and whatnot goes, um, little uncertain on that they may have some uh, oil fields up here but I, I don't know too much about the Illinois area in terms of their fracking and oil fields out here here's today's quake uh, 3.4 hard to say so if anyone knows uh, this area very well let me know if there's any type of uh, oil fields out there. I don't really see anything being listed on the map here. A lot of times you'll see uh, a mention of some oil fields here on the uh, map legend here while well, the map reading. But uh, yeah, so you know earthquakes can happen out there. Not too often. So when they do happen, they kind of shake things up, uh, shake some nerves up out there for sure. Uh, a look at the go back here to the hazard map here it does have this area of illinois into the hazard zone not a major one but they do see earthquakes and they can happen out here around this area it's north of the new madrid seismic zone which is a major seismically hazardous area here in the center portion of the country uh, that area is capable of producing some very large earthquakes much much stronger than a four pointer up in the seven range upper sevenths and uh, it's been a while early 18 early 1800s is the last time that took place all right let's get back out of here and see what we got uh, as far as the rest of the globe goes still getting a uh, man a lot of earthquake activity down here in the tonga region the latest one a 5.8 very shallow earthquake notice this bouncing back and forth here between deeper quakes shallower earthquake activity here um the last deep one there was early this morning. A few hours later, we get a larger quake up here where we've seen uh, some activity last night at the shallow areas of the subduction zone. That's a good sign here that we may be seeing something bigger out here. We haven't really seen any further advancement along this plate boundary. Uh, Papua New Guinea had a, looks like a 5.2 early this morning around 1 o'clock my time here. Uh, but we're still lacking this area. Very quiet within this zone. So we're skipping over this area. I know this region's building up steam, but also at the same time here, we're back building a lot of pressure up along the subduction zone uh, between the deeper and the shallow adjustment. So keep an eye on this area in general. Uh, I think this whole region right here may be looking at a larger quake uh, sooner than later. 
for the West Coast here, California. Looks like a typical day out here for a Monday. Not a whole lot above 2.5. We do have one little two-pointer, 2.8 south of the border. Uh, aside from that, as you can see, pretty quiet in terms of 2.5 and above. Uh, some microquake activity out here, but that's generally common across the West Coast on any given day. Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes. Again, nothing major going on in the Cascadia subduction zone there. Taking a little break, or at least around the, uh, the Juan de Fuca Ridge up here, taking a little break in terms of any further movement out there. All right, so let's see what else we got here. The Oklahoma, Texas area oil fields have been getting hit fairly hard with uh, earthquake activity. We also had a two-pointer out in the New Madrid seismic zone yesterday, 2.1. Aside from that, that uh, Illinois earthquake, pretty quiet out there across the East Coast. Got another earthquake coming in here just as I'm speaking into the Tonga region. That's going to be a 5.3, very shallow earthquake here. So it it definitely looks like we're seeing enough strain build up here at the surface levels for something maybe a little bit larger along this Tonga Trench region. Got to remember that the deeper quakes here do add further strain up where it's expected. And this region is no stranger to uh, large earthquakes historically here. Just, you know, one of the most active regions in the world where we see, you know, almost every year or so large earthquake activity taking place here in this area big ones big ones uh the darker ones here indicative of deeper activity uh, moderate depth here for the uh, gray ones and of course the subduction zone interface there at the start of where everything begins uh, in the white circles those are uh, some big earthquakes that take place out here so we'll continue to keep an eye on that again another 5.3 coming into this area as we speak hawaii see what's going on out here in the uh, Pacific getting a little cluttering going on here right around the summit area very close to the crater region I'm starting to wonder here if maybe we we're not gonna see a, a return of the eruption here at uh, the lava lake area so let's go see what's going on here from the volcano hazards map real quick by the way folks the uh, drawing is gonna be held today later about 3 o'clock uh, local time here California time as far as the member drawing goes We'll get that in today. So a lot of earthquake activity up here at the summit. There's some of that being reported on the live si or on the uh, recorded seismograph. A look at the lava lake area does not show any unusual activity. It's almost always showing a little bit of volcanic gases out here. So on any given day, we can see this. It does not look like it's elevated at all but that you know that may be deceiving because we do have a lot of earthquake activity right up here at the very close to the crater region the lava lake area and it's awfully sh shallow so we got to watch that we may see something here um kick off in this area soon in terms of uh, uh an eruption Latest update was put out uh, today, it looks like, by the USGS here. No significant change here in the volcano. It's not erupting. A minor increase in earthquake activity has been observed beneath the summit and the Upper East Rift Zone over the past 24 hours here. Uh, gradual inflation of the summit and Upper East Rift Zones continue. Substantial increases in seismicity and or deformation could result in a new eruptive episode, but currently there's no... Uh, signs of an imminent eruption. 42 earthquakes are detected beneath the caldera in the last 24 hours and 38 there in the upper east rift zone. So very shallow earthquake activity. Just uh, watching it, seeing uh, what takes place. Of course, our last most recent eruption there was off on the southwest rift zone that lasted for just a short period, about 10 hours out here. Since then, the migration of magma, I feel, has moved off here to this area, uh, Upper East Rift Zone. And more late, lately, it seems like it's wanting to break through around this area uh, up at the uh, summit region. So we'll continue to watch that. Again, no major signs of, uh, of a eruption right now. The uh, deformation chart, see what we got here. 
continues to go up. There's a little bit of displacement going on here. That's a sign of some magma movement um, happening. This is the uh, summit past two days. So, yeah, something happened here earlier this morning, late last night, where we've seen a displacement of magma uh, pos possibly intruding somewhere else away from the area, and then we're coming back up. Uh, overall sign here, though, is increasing inflation there across the uh, summit and the east rift zone. Let's see the rest of the world here. Let's see what we got on the globe. Nothing going on in the Atlantic. Fairly quiet for the most part. I mean, we got earthquake activity here across the Mediterranean. Nothing new. They have earthquakes every single day. New Zealand area, a couple threes down there still stirring up. But I think our hot spot's going to be this area right here where I pinpointed last night uh, the seismic gap zone. Really surprised we haven't seen any increasing activity. But we're getting deeper, shallower, deeper, shallower. That's a sign right there of uh, some major adjustment about ready to take place. Way up north here into, is that Alaska area? That's into the Canada side here. 4.1 way up there in the Yukon area. The earthquake came in about 6 o'clock this morning here, my time. Aside from that, uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things, see how things play out today on this Monday. Pretty quiet here across the Yellowstone National Park. Super volcano here. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity. Um, that doesn't even look like earthquake activity. Really don't see any, to be honest here. Some wind events from yesterday. We do get these thunderstorms that pop up and uh, create some wind events up there. And they do show up on these seismograph stations, surprisingly. All right. Space weather activity here. Another M flare overnight, looks like. Nothing big. Uh, Low-grade M flare over here. These guys have been kind of slow recently. There we go. Looks like an M 2.5. Still flaring a little bit there with some C flare activity. Uh, that active region, 3738, is now way over here on the western limb. Still looking dynamic here in terms of complexity. But... Uh, it's getting into that position here where we're not going to see uh, any Earth-directed stuff should things blast off from there. And we're left with a whole lot of very weak sunspots, at least center disk here of the sun. We're watching uh, a couple different areas here around the eastern limb come around. Uh, this one here looks like it is in a growing stage, indicating some complexity here. There's a lot of, a lot of complexity. So we'll watch this sunspot as it evolves and turns into the earth directed view 3751 i think we need to watch that area uh, overall threat right now 15 percent chance for x flare m flare at 65 c flare around 99 percent chance or so no major wars in the forecast for now folks and a look at the storm prediction center for severe weather here on earth now well, they added an enhanced area here across this area where we've seen that uh, uh 3.4 earthquake this morning Right around the Illinois area, got a tornado potential as well. 5% and 2% in these zones. Some wind and some hail. Looks like the main threats here are going to be tornado and some wind events out there today. Those outflow, inflow winds can definitely create a lot of damage if they get going. So just a heads up here around this area for the severe potential today. Uh, seismograph stations out here look... Uh, Look fairly quiet for the most part. Really not seeing anything major going on there. So we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this afternoon for the member drawing. Again, we'll be holding that at 3 o'clock local time here, California time. That's going to be 6 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll do that as a secondary live stream. So get your name in on the bowl, the fish bowl. Or the magic bucket. I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but we'll put everyone in there that's a member. And we'll give away some prizes live. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this afternoon. Stay safe.